Good morning. Thank you for joining us at St. Stephen's Lutheran Church in Hickory, North Carolina. Just a few announcements before we start the service. Please leave a quick hello on our YouTube page. We'd love to know who's watching. Along with our online worship service, we are gathering for worship in the back parking lot, drive-in style at nine o'clock on Sunday mornings until further notice. Join Pastor Leonard for coffee and conversation on Zoom at 9 a.m. on Thursdays. An invitation is sent out via email. Contact the church office if you need more information. Our food pantry is in need of food and monetary donations. A list of items needed can be found on our website, sselca.com. Volunteers are also needed to help hand out food bags on Wednesdays. Contact the church office to sign up for a morning or afternoon two-hour shift. Please keep in your prayers the family and friends of J. Lee Eckerd, who passed away recently, the sisters of Kathy Fox, B.J. Fry, and Lorena, both with breast cancer. Tammy Falcone and Juanita Dietz, who are both at Trinity Ridge, Kim Ramsey, Barry Sullivan, Sherry Desern, Carol Jones Towery, and Debbie Benj. If you need anything or have any questions, please call or email the church office. God's blessings to you all. Now let's begin our worship service. Good morning. Welcome to St. Stephen's Lutheran Church. We're a member of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, the North Carolina Synod. We're so glad that you can join us for worship. Worship continues to be offered online at nine o'clock on Sunday mornings, as well as worship in the parking lot. One of the most important things we do on the planet is gather to worship God in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, we begin by thanking God for claiming us in holy baptism. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift 
of holy baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs to your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us, O Lord, with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our defender, storms rage around us and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear. And preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first reading is from 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. At Horeb, the mount of God, which is Elijah, came to a cave and spent the night there. And then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, when you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Yehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel and Meholah, as, private, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes the sword of Hazel, Yehu shall kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Yehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave the 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the 10th chapter of Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you on your lips and in your heart. That is, 
the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is written in the 14th chapter of St. Matthew. Jesus, our Lord, and the disciples have just fed 5,000 men plus women and children. And Jesus is now talking to his disciples and encouraging them to go across the Sea of Galilee while he goes to pray. Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he dismissed the crowds. And after he dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them to the sea, but when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it's you, command me to come out to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Here ends the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> it's always a, a significant opportunity and challenge to proclaim the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord. I oftentimes jokingly say it's, it's just good to say a good word for Jesus. <clears throat> and today is a wonderful, wonderful text as we look at Elijah and Elisha and Peter and the disciples and Jesus and we talk about faith and doubt and the questioning that often comes to us as people who follow Jesus with faith. Let us pray. <clears throat> kind and loving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we gather this day to worship you. We worship you in a virtual way online and others will worship this day in parking lots, not just here at St. Stephen's, but across North Carolina and around the United States and literally across this world. So we ask, O oh Lord, that you might bless and keep all who worship this day, those who in other time zones have already worshiped and those who later today will worship you. We ask all of this in Christ's holy name and for his sake. Amen. I'd like to tell you about little Tommy. Tommy was born just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. His father was a Baptist minister. His mother was a church organist. He grew up in the faith. And by the time Tommy was 
six, seven years old, he was already fairly accomplished on the keyboard. He was even beginning to write songs. Then he became very interested in writing jazz. And by the time he was 15, 16 years old, he was writing all kinds of jazz songs. About that time, his parents moved to Chicago. Tommy then put together a jazz band, and they were in a significant demand all over the Chicago area. When Tommy was 22, he met a young woman by the name of Nettie, and they fell in love, and they were married. By the, time, by the time Tommy was 23, he was uh, very much involved in the Christian faith. He was able to secure a job in a Baptist church where he was the pianist and the music director. And he began to write songs about the faith. He wrote hundreds of songs, hundreds of gospel songs. And people would invite Tommy to various places to speak and to sing and to talk about how he would write songs. Tommy was invited to go to St. Louis from Chicago, and he was hesitant to go, although he thought it would be a wonderful opportunity to talk about Jesus, because his wife Nettie was expecting in a month. In fact, as he walked out the door, he turned around and he decided not to go. He went back and he said to Nettie, I'm not going. I just feel like I shouldn't leave you. It's just going to be a few weeks until you deliver our child, our first child. She said, no, no, no. I want you to go on. They're expecting you in St. Louis and they will receive a blessing from your singing and from your speaking. So he said, okay. Several days later, he was in St. Louis, he was speaking. When he sat down from speaking, he received a note on a yellow piece of paper and it said, your wife has just died. Now this was the 1930s. So a friend of his took him back to Chicago in a Model A. And when he arrived, uh, his wife Nettie, although had died, she had produced them a son. It looked like the son was doing okay, but the next day, their son died. And then Tommy had his wife and his child buried in the same casket. And Tommy talked about the pain and the frustration and the doubt and the loss of faith that he experienced. It was traumatic. He couldn't believe it. He had been writing gospel songs. He had been involved in the church. And here he had lost his wife and their child. He just was so angry at God. He could hardly believe. And he was full of questions. Well, I suspect we all know what it's like to have questions, to have doubt, even at times to be angry with God. Why is this happening to me? Why is this taking place in my family? This past week, our daughter Lucia in Richmond, Virginia, had a question. Uh, she came in, this, my, my, my uh, son and his wife were telling me, uh, she came into the living room and she said, a mosquito just bit me. And she said, I don't mind a mosquito biting me, because I know the mosquito <laughs> needs my blood. She said, but I don't understand why I have to itch after the mosquito takes my blood. Well, now that's a very important question for a five-year-old, not to the level of Tommy's question, but we have questions about what happens to us, and we just don't understand. Now, in the Old Testament lesson for today, we read about Elijah and Elisha. Jezebel has said to Elijah, I'm going to kill you in the next 24 hours because you killed my prophets, the prophets of Baal, the priests of Baal. And she said, if I don't kill you within 24 hours, may God the Baal take my life. So Elijah, as you might imagine, she was the queen. He was so afraid he left. And after he traveled for 40 days, ended up in a cave. And he was talking to God. And he said, I've tried to do what you wanted me to do. And I'm the only person on the whole planet that believes that you are God. 
God said to Elijah, I want you to go up on top of the mountain and I want you to wait for me there and I'll speak to you. So Elijah went up to the top of the mountain. An earthquake came by. Wind came by. Fire came by. No word from God. Then there was this stillness and the stillness God spoke. And God said several things he wanted for Elijah to do, but perhaps the most important was he wanted him to go and tap Elisha, Elijah tapping Elisha to follow him. So Elijah was going to be the mentor to Elisha, and Elisha was going to take over when Elijah retired. A very important decision. And I'm not sure Elijah was happy with that, to see the person that's going to be coming after him. But that's what God asked him to do. Elijah had all kinds of questions. Why is this happening? And God said to Elijah, though, but let me tell you, you are not the only one that worships me. There are 7,000 other people that are worshiping me, so don't think that you're alone. We sometimes have a tendency to think that we are by ourselves, and that is just not the case. We have a cloud of witnesses that are with us. I remember a few years ago, I was visiting a congregation, and as I was waiting on people to arrive for the meeting, there was a woman out in the uh, cemetery, and I could tell the way she was standing at a certain place, it looked like a certain place, a holy place, as she was uh, bent over, bowed over, and then she came, she was going to be a part of the meeting, and she came, and I said to her, it looks to me like you were standing on holy ground, that you were a very special place in that cemetery. And she said, yes, I was. She said, my husband died about six months ago, and it was such a painful time. He was so sick for so long. She said, but this congregation walked with me. She said, at first I thought I was alone, but then that wasn't the case. She said, this congregation surrounded me with love and support. They surrounded my husband with love and support. She said, I couldn't have gotten through it. She thought at first she was alone, as did Elijah, but that's not the case. God walks with us and raises up other people to walk with us. Now, if we look at the gospel lesson for today, it is an absolutely fascinating passage one of the most popular passages in all of Scripture, three of the gospel writers tell about this particular event. <clears throat> Jesus and the disciples have just fed 5,000 plus people there on the Sea of Galilee, and Jesus has been trying now for a couple of days to get some time away, so he says to them, why don't you get on a boat, go on across the Sea of Galilee, and I'm going to go up on the hill and I'm going to pray. I just need some time by myself. So they get in the boat and they start across the Sea of Galilee. Now, where he, they're going across the Sea of Galilee, as we said last week, it's up on the western uh, bank. So it's about five miles or so, and even then, probably about five miles across. So it's not a great distance. But they're out in the sea, and all of a sudden these waves come up. And the Sea of Galilee, that's easy to happen. It can be calm one moment, and five minutes later, there can just be waves, high waves everywhere. It's a bit dangerous in that way. So they look, and they see something coming across the water, and they, <laughs> they think it's a ghost. I Can't you just hear them talking and screaming and hollering, high waves, a ghost coming toward them? And then they recognize it's Jesus. Jesus says, it's I. And he said to them something really important for us to hear. Don't be afraid. Well, when they recognize Jesus, although the waves are still very, very high, Peter says to him, well, if it's you, Jesus, invite me to come out there and I'll just come out and visit with you on the water. That sounds like something Peter would say, doesn't it? Kind of a uh, gregarious sort of guy, always wanting to be the leader, trying to do things that are right to show his faith. So he starts to walk on the water out to Jesus and he's doing really well, apparently, according to Scripture. But all of a sudden, it appears that Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and saw the storm. That's important to hear. He took his eyes off of Jesus 
and saw the bad weather. In this storm that we're in, it's easy to look at the storm and the frustration and the fear and the news and take our eyes off of Jesus. But Peter did just that, and he started to sink. And he screamed, Lord, save me. And then, this is the most important part of the entire passage, Jesus reached down and took Peter by the hand and lifted him up out of the water, and Jesus and Peter got into the boat. And the disciples, who thought this was a ghost, worshipped Jesus. Fascinating story. It's important that we not focus on what Jesus did, but rather, that we not focus on what Peter did, but what Jesus did. I'll tell you, I, I have no desire whatsoever to walk on the water. But I have a great desire and a great need for Jesus to take hold of my hand and lift me out of the storm of life. Remember I told you about little Tommy? Well, that is Tommy Dorsey. And Tommy Dorsey wrote about the trauma that he felt, the frustration that he felt, the questions he had, the anger toward God. And he said it was just an unbelievably challenging time. About a month later, little Tommy, Tommy Dorsey, was visiting a friend of his, and he sat down at his friend's piano, and he just began to play, still so angry and so frustrated. He began to play, and this beautiful tune came to mind and these words came to mind precious lord take my hand lead me on let me stand i'm tired i'm weak i'm worn through the storm through the night lead me on to the light take my hand precious lord lead me home and he said those words just came to him and he had never before felt such an inner peace a beautiful hymn, a hymn that was Martin Luther King's favorite hymn. In fact, just before he was shot, he said to his friend, I want to play Precious Lord, Lead Me Home tomorrow in our meeting. It was played at Martin Luther King's funeral. It was played at Lyndon Baines Johnson's funeral. It's a beautiful hymn. I want you to listen to these marvelous words. The first verse talks about the storms of life. The second verse talks about the journey that's oftentimes challenging. But the third verse reminds us of the river of hope and how we have this sense of hope that comes to us through faith. So let's sing this beautiful hymn, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Take my hand, lead me on. 
we confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. It's an ancient creed that reminds us of our faith, a reminder of the faith that so many Christians around this world share. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Prayer is that opportunity to talk to God and listen to God and see what God has to say to us as God is always willing to listen and hear our prayers. Lord God, we praise your name this day. For your church throughout the world, we pray. Give courage in the midst of the storms of life so that we may see and hear the calling of Jesus. As Jesus says, take heart, it's I, do not be afraid. May we follow Jesus wherever Jesus leads. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the well-being of your creation, protect the water, the forests, the lands, and the wildlife from exploitation and abuse. Help the human family as you take us by your hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations and their leaders, in your love and faith, meet us and take care of us. Give us faith and hope with a righteous kiss of peace. May nations in conflict know the peace that is the fruit of justice and the justice that is the path of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in need, O oh Lord, we pray. We pray for everyone who calls upon your name, that they will be lifted from the storms of life. Accompany all who are lonely. Hear the voices of those who cry out in anguish. And support those who are frustrated in their search for a place to live. We pray for those suffering this day, those that we name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our congregation, we pray. You have gathered us as your people, and we thank you for this gift of gathering, although it's virtual gathering. We pray for those who are new in this community, for students and teachers preparing for a new school year, and those struggling with unexpected hardship. Supply us generously with your grace for our life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for the saints of the whole church from all times and places, and for the saints in our lives and in our community whom you have gathered to yourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who walks with us in the storms of life. Amen. We pray together the prayer that our Lord Jesus gave to us at the request of the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. 
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. These are challenging times. We have questions like Thomas Dorsey, like Lucia, like Elijah, and Elisha, and Peter and the disciples. And the answer to those questions would be, what do we do in times of doubt and frustration in the middle of a storm? We need to remember that Jesus, our Lord, reaches down takes us by the hand, and ultimately leads us home. Therefore, we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us for worship this day at St. Stephen's Lutheran Church. We hope that you'll join us next week for worship and celebration of the salvation that comes to us through Jesus our Lord.